Hey guys, this is Kyle with Projection Up, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a business plan for a startup barbershop. Now in this video, I'm going to be using this fictitious, generic example of a barbershop business plan. This template is available for free, so it's structured in a way that will explain each section so you can go through and write your own barbershop business plan. But I'm going to be going through just to show you the structure of a business, the business plan for it. But primarily what I want to do is highlight five key, point, five key points that I think will really make the difference, especially if you're trying to get financing for your barbershop. First of all, as I mentioned, my name is Kyle. And before my time with Projection Hub, I was an SBA lender for about seven years. And so my time there consisted of helping business owners and startups um, review their business plans, their financial projections, and create a SBA loan package that would be going through underwriting and helping them through that process. And so during my time, I got to help hundreds of businesses get approved for financing and, and review thousands of business plans, several of which were salons and barbershops. And also Projection Hub has helped more than 50,000 small businesses create financial projections specifically for business plans, loan applications, pitch decks, acquisitions, you name it. And so lots of experience seeing these businesses, working with these businesses. And yeah, today I'm going to be going through this free template that's available to you down in the description below, no strings attached. And I will try to give you as much information as I can. So if at any point you find this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up. That's super helpful for us as a fellow small business. And consider subscribing to the channel. Not all of our content is about barbershops, but you might find it interesting to we have content just about business management, business growth, and financial management for different businesses. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so why do you need a business plan? Now, maybe it sounds obvious or even maybe cliche as to why you would need a business plan, but I think it's worth saying that the purpose of your business plan is to not is not to take on the responsibility of explaining like what a barbershop does or important details of the industry or the ins and out of the business. That is not what your business plan needs to do. The purpose of your business plan is to demonstrate your specific game plan to go from where you are at the start to what you would consider success. And as far as your lender concerned, that success would look like probably becoming profitable and paying back your loan successfully over time. And so we want to be as specific and distinct as possible because if we can leave the lender with no doubt that we'll be successful, that's a win, right? We want to convince them to give us the financing because they have no reason to believe that we're gonna fail because our plan is realistic, achievable, and very well laid out. So that's the goal of our business plan. Now, and I'm going to try to give you some more tips on how to accomplish that in the business plan today. So first thing I'll point out here is your table of contents. It's only 18 pages long, this business plan. Now you can see here quickly, because this is a sample business plan, no section is really long or super thought out, but it's giving you a little reference, a little taste as to what to put in each section. And so your business plan is probably gonna be a little bit longer because you're going to want to go into a little bit more detail in all of the sections that I'll show you here today but really not that much longer. I think it's a myth to, to believe that a longer business plan means a better business plan. When I was a lender, if I received a business plan that was 50 pages long, and so that means if important details are spread out across 50 pages, important details are gonna get missed out and that's gonna hurt you in the loan application process. And so we want to jam packed our 15 to 20 pages with really important information. Another thing, that I'll point out here is almost half of this business plan is the projections. Projections are absolutely the most important part of your business plan. Now, the narrative portion is important, but it's not gonna be groundbreaking or novel. So your lender's probably gonna read your business plan once or skim it once, and then they're gonna refer to your projections several times through the underwriting process. So just keep that in mind. But really starting to jump into things here now, first section being our executive summary. I want you to think of this section like a cover letter to a a resume for a job application. This is gonna be your lender's first kind of impression about your business plan. And so we really just wanna incorporate a couple of key highlights from details throughout the business plan. And so a couple things I'll point out in this sample here. So think about this company overview a little bit as like maybe the founder story. So you're gonna talk a little bit about the ownership experience, but ultimately just lay out why you're starting the business, what your business is that you're starting. Key point number three, which we'll get to later in the business plan. This could be a spot you talk about it. Also in the company description, you can talk about it, but I'll get into that in a little bit. In your objectives here, one recommendation I would make, I like seeing a short-term and long-term goal, 
but I think it's better to have a specific measurable goal. So in here it says, establish Barber's Den as a top destination in, in, in Indianapolis. I'd like to see a more like specific goal as in to reach profitability in 18 months or something of that nature, something actually achievable and measurable. And same thing for long-term, right? So this says to expand the pr pr presence, possibly opening up additional locations. So rather than being like, maybe we'll open up more locations, I would wanna see something like, we hope in, to open a, two more additional locations in 10 years, within 10 years or something like that. Cause that gives me the lender, the perspective of well, what's your, what are you hoping to accomplish? If it's just to have a one location that gets to a good point and just stays there, that's great. But it's a different kind of level of ambition to want to open up additional locations. Only one other thing that I'd mentioned you could add in this section if you'd like to is one um, paragraph, maybe highlighting some of the financial keys. So that's maybe that's like startup costs, could be like how much funding you need to raise or ask for when you estimate you're gonna break even, that kind of thing. But you don't have to include that, but I have seen that in many business plans. Okay, moving on to the company description. This is really just an extension of that execu executive summary. Again, we get this company description here, company history. So this is really similar to what we just talked about with the founder story. We're gonna talk a little bit more about the legal structure, outlining your target market so that we're just defining, okay, if we are a barbershop, is there a specific type of clientele we really wanna focus on as our primary audience? And then the unique selling proposition, don't include this if it's going to be something really big. Include it though, if there is something that you actually feel like sets you apart. If there's a sp specific type of barbering or something like that's actually known or renowned, or maybe you have a certified, sometimes people have like certified hair loss certifications or something like that to have treatment options for it. If you have something like that, definitely include that because that sets you apart from the competition. But if you're just saying like, our unique sell proposition is that we're the best. It's okay, well, everybody could say that. So just make sure it's actually something that is your secret sauce that you would wanna put here. Okay, market analysis. And I know we have not reached one of the five key points yet, but we will in this section and then we'll start to move pretty quickly through them. So our market analysis is where we get into the meat of things. So here we want to address the market that actually exists, that we think that there's room in the market for another barbershop is what we wanna to try to accomplish in this section. So first off, in this industry overview, please avoid doing the shark tank approach of the hair salon or the barbering industry is a $2 trillion industry and we're gonna capture X amount of percent of that. Please avoid doing that because that's not your attainable or addressable audience. Talk about your specific location, your audience. So maybe that means in a 20 mile radius, there's only one shop dedicated to barbering or something like that, right? That's a helpful overview of the industry where you're at. As far as competitors go, now for a barbershop, this is a little unique because I would consider a direct competitor another barbershop. But you also have to consider traditional salons as an indirect competitor. And in this example, I know it says at-home grooming products and services, mobile barbers. I don't really think that's as much an indirect competitor. So there's gonna always gonna be people that wanna cut their hair at home but I would consider a, a traditional salon probably as your indirect competitor. So what I would do in this, in this section is probably highlight one to five actual businesses that you would consider to be your competitors within a 10 to 20 mile radius. Just, and then maybe even mention like, what do they do well or what do they not do well? That's an opportunity for you to capture some of that audience and include that in this section. You could even just use like a typical Google map search of just finding what barbershops exist because some are dedicated barbershops and some just maybe have one or two barber chairs inside a salon. So figure out what kind of information you can about them and then just highlight like, what do they do well and what do they not do that you can capture from. And then I would list them in priority by their proximity to where you plan to be located. Like how close will they be to your location? Um, okay, so let's get to, to key point number one. Everything you see here, I think is a minimum requirement for this section. But if you really wanna make it stand out, what you want to do is if you can support what you're stating here with some sort of research or evidence. So we, it's one thing to say like, yeah, there's a market, there's, a, there's an available market. It's another thing to say, like, here's why. I think this proves that there's an available market. That's great. That takes this section from good to great for a lender, okay? You, know what you're talking about. And it's not just a gut feeling, you're actually supporting that with evidence. 
<clears throat> there's a few ways you can do this. You could order a foot traffic accessibility study, market research report, whatever you want to call it. Those can be really expensive, but those do exist if you really want to get down to the details of seeing how many people walk by your specific location or something like that. But there are also some free ways to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to show you example number four here. And that is, I'm going to go over to this free tool, Google AdWords. You can create a free Google AdWords account and then they have this keyword planning tool. tool. And what this does is it allows you to simulate how often are people searching for specific key phrases in a target location. So I have my location set to Indianapolis because that's where our barbershop is going to be. And then I want to see how often is someone searching barbershop near me because that's a very common thing to search. Now this is going to do some a few great things. One, it's going to give me some other recommended keywords that I didn't search for because I'm curious to see what are people searching for often. I can see how many people are searching it seasonality. And then the most important thing to me is the trend data. So I can see here barbershops near me, barber close to me, haircut near me. So I'm, I want to, I'm more interested in specific barbershop related keywords, right? And so some good things I can see here, all of these are growing up 49%, up 123%. That's a lot of growth. So that to me is an indication there's demand because it is growing, right? It's not this is one thing to keep in mind though, for this, this is only evidence of demand, which I would consider to be the market, right? There are people, a growing number of people looking for barbershops. What this doesn't do is it doesn't indicate the, or give us a good picture of the supply side. It's very well possible that there's already enough barbershops just because more people are searching for them. There still might be plenty of barbershops available. We don't know that for sure, but this little, trick here is only going to show half of that equation, but it's still helpful to, to do this and demonstrate, and you can get your location much more specific than Indianapolis. You can, but this is a helpful example of if I just include some screenshots from this and, and say some things about it and put that in my business plan, that's just an additional proof of the market I'm talking about. Okay. So that's an example of key point number one. All right, moving on to marketing and sales strategy and key point number two will be at the end of this section. So here we're just going to talk about what are the actual services we're offering pretty straightforward what are the what type of pricing are we looking for here i would include every service you're going to provide and the cost of every service you're going to provide include that in here if you're going to sell any product include that in here so sales strategy this might just look again it's probably pretty straightforward maybe you're going to have a website you're going to be active on social media people can book online etc cetera, etc cetera. nothing crazy so Again, everything you see here, minimum requirement. You need to have that um, just because that is what would be expected for a, a barbershop to, to perform and exist. So what is key point number two? Similar to key point number one, we need to demonstrate how we're actually going to acquire some customers. So we want to give the lender some confidence that we're not just going to say, all right, well, we're going to open up on day one and we're going to do these things and we hope people show up. So what we if we can demonstrate traction, just a tech word, some momentum that when day one comes, we've either already made sales or we have ensured that people are, there's a high probability that people are actually going to be showing up to use our business. And so let me give you some examples of that. The two best examples <clears throat> of traction are pre-launch revenue. So you're actually making money before you even open your doors or names on a list. So people that have indicated they are interested in your services prior to you opening. And so there's, let me give you an example of both of those. Pre-launch revenue would be an example of maybe you are a barber that works at a different salon and you've been considering opening your own barbershop. And so you have your own customer base, right? And maybe a couple of other barbers at different locations that if you opened one yourself, they would come to your barbershop. Although that may not feel like it, that is an example of you're going to open up day one with a book of business. You're already going to have business coming in. And that's going to be music to a lender's ear because they know you're not starting at zero. You may not be starting at full capacity, but you're not starting at zero. So that's an example of pre-launch revenue. Let's say you don't have that type of situation, right? And you're just cold turkey, clean slate, starting up a new place, starting from scratch. Probably going to be hard to have pre-launch revenue but you could start hustling. You could start 
posting, going to events, trying to get the word out and basically just collecting names, right? Friends, family, friends of friends, and just, I'm not sure if is listed in here, pre-opening booking offers. One I would mention in, in here is you could do like a VIP founders club. So anyone that signs up might get a discount for the first year after you open your doors, right? Just different tactics to get names on a list. And so that way you could say to your lender, like I've already got 375 people signed up on a list that are interested in using our services for the first year, anything like that is helpful to a lender because it says a lot about your character, a lot about your hustle, but it also talks about the fact that like you have a higher degree of likelihood to start having money coming in the door right away, rather than it's going to take you a few months to scale up. So that is an example of customer acquisition demonstration or traction and include as much detail as you can about that in your business plan. <clears throat> okay, moving along. Operations and management. So this is just talking more about like the actual logistics in the barber shop itself. How you're gonna handle appointments and scheduling, the facility itself, your staff and training, if you're gonna be recruiting, how you're gonna manage your inventory, you're gonna have a point of sale service or a point of sale cash register or machine, that kind of thing. So all of that's necessary for this section, but the key point is you really need to help highlight your relevant industry experience. So again, we want to leave the lender with no doubt that we know what we're doing and we know what we're getting ourselves into. And so if you have relevant personal experience, you need to highlight that here. If that is management experience, sales experience, those are still transferable skills. You should mention those, especially if you have barbering experience, certainly include that. That's obviously relevant, but let, let's assume Maybe you have never worked in a barbershop before, or you've never owned a barbershop before, and you've had a different career. Maybe you worked in marketing for 10 years and then you decided, wow, it'd be really great if I opened up a barbershop here. Still mention your transferable, transferable skills. Like I mentioned, sales, advertising, graphic design, whatever you have included there. But what you need to do is you need to supplement your experience with somebody else's relevant experience. So you need to have a partner, a co-founder, a key employee that you plan to hire that has the missing skills that you do not. That would be necessary and would give a lender confidence you know what you're doing. So either you need to highlight your well-rounded experience or your team's well-rounded experience that will be there to manage the business from the get-go so that your lender doesn't have any concerns that you know what you're getting yourself into. So that's what relevant industry experience is. Make sure you go into detail on highlighting the strengths and the experience of you and your team, your launch team. Okay, now for the big one, the financial projections here, okay? So this is usually the section where founders get really overwhelmed or a little psyched out, but I assure you, stick with me, it's very doable, I'm gonna show you how here. So first off, we, we are covering our startup costs. Let me zoom in a little bit. We've got our startup costs here outlined. We've got a little financial summary here of some key financial points. So our five years of revenue, projected revenue, cost of goods sold, gross profit, profitability, et cetera. Some barbershop specific things like new clients, client visits per day, you know, margins on retail sales, key ratios over the five year, first five years, a breakdown of our monthly recurring expenses. And then we've got five year projected financial statements for profit and loss or income statement, cash flow projections, balance sheet, and then our break even point. Okay. So before I lose you full transparency, those were created using this template. Now you might be rolling your eyes that I'm doing a shameless plug here for this template. It is linked down in the description below. So there are three ways to create financial projections. One, you got to create them yourself from scratch, which is really hard to do. And to be honest, they're probably not going to be correct. If I did them from scratch, they would not be correct either even with my experience, just because there's a lot to take into account there. Two, you could hire an accountant to do it for you, which is a viable option, but it can be expensive. Thousand, several thousand dollars to be able to have a CPA go through all of that and create it from scratch. Three, you could use a template like this that's been built by a, a trustworthy accountant in our service. Our CPA on staff has built this template for you to use, and this has been used by hundreds of we, we have helped hundreds of salons and we created this barbershop version of it recently to be a little bit more specific to barbershops. So let me just show you how it works really quick. We're only inputting data on these four blue tabs. 
and we're only editing stuff in the blue boxes here, okay? If we're gonna have an investor, what things do we need to buy that are big before the business gets started? Are we gonna have a loan? This is gonna help calculate, do we have enough cash plan for the business to work? Now here, something that's really special about our template is a lot of projection templates will just ask you what your estimated monthly revenue is. This one will actually help you calculate your revenue because you might be like, I don't know what my estimated monthly revenue is gonna be. This is going to use the numbers about a barbershop to help you calculate it from the ground up. If you plan to advertise, how many clients you plan to, new clients from organic sources, how many people do you plan to come in the door? How many will turn into regulars? And then here's just a breakdown of your services, like your menu of services, what the cost of each of those are. Are you gonna do commission for your barbers? cost of supplies, and then if you plan to sell products, you can have those here too, right? So it's gonna take all of those. Here's your monthly expenses. You can customize all of these, very simple. And then if you have any salaried employees, you can include those here too. And then it's gonna generate all of those charts and graphs and the financial statements that you need and your lender needs, okay? So that is just a quick shameless plug that's available in the link below. And if you stick around with me to the end of the video, I'll give you a promo code to get a, a nice discount on that too. The template's already less than $100, so I promise it's worth the money. Comes with free support as well. So key point number four though is not to create financial projections. You have to have financial projections. Key point number four is they need to be realistic financial projections. So let me show you how to do that really quick. Easiest way to do that is to just benchmark it against things you can search for on the internet. So let's say, let's use a key data point here. Let's do net income or, or net profit, right? That's gonna be an easy one. Let's find out what a typical industry average is. Right now we're first year, everything's gonna be off because you always typically have a loss in the first year, but then we get up to 10%, 15%, 14%, 16%, okay? So you can either go to Google and just search for things one at a time, and you can see here profit margin in a barbershop typically ranges from 10 to 20%, so we're right within that range. You could also use a tool like ChatGPT or Bard and get it all at once, and it's gonna be accurate as well. Net profit, typically around 10 to 20%. So that, we're right in that range, 10, 15, 14, 16. So you don't need to do this to copy other people's numbers, but just to basically validate that you are looking at this realistically and, and through the right lens so that when you hand it to your lender, they're not like, whoa, those numbers seem way off based on the industry average. So it's a very simple process. You create projections and then you just benchmark those by searching for them. And that's a really simple kind of double checking you can do there. And that brings us to the end of the business plan, but we have one more key point. This is specifically if you're planning to get a loan for your business, and this is not something you need to put in your business plan, but more so just to help you frame your expectations. You need to be prepared to talk about skin in the game with your lender. Now, what does that mean? That means when you go to get a loan, you are going to be expected to share in the risk of that loan. With that is gonna include a cash investment. Your lender's not gonna lend you 100% of the funds that you need for your business. They probably would be willing to lend you 80%, right? And so you're gonna have to come up with the other 20%. Now they don't typically care where you get that 20% from as long as it's behind them in priority of getting paid back. You still need to come up with that, whether that's your money or money from a friend or whatever that is. Another example is you're going to have to personally guarantee the loan. You need to be prepared for that. When I was a lender, many people would come to me and say they received the advice to keep their business and personal stuff separate. That's great advice when it comes to bank accounts and book, bookkeeping. You will be required to personally guarantee the loan, especially if it's an SBA loan. The third thing will be is collateral, right? Your barbershop will typically not have enough equipment to collateralize the loan. Unless you own the building and you're buying the building with the loan, then that can help collateralize the loan. If not, you're gonna probably need to have a co-signer or you're gonna need to you know, put a second mortgage, mortgage on a house, um, pledge a free and clear vehicle, something to help collateralize that loan. Your, your bank is gonna to wanna to try to mitigate their risk as much as possible. So I'm just telling you this ahead of time. You don't have to do all these things. You certainly shouldn't put it in your business plan, but you just need to expect that that's gonna be the reality. And you need to know what you're willing to pledge, how far, how much you're willing to share before you need to walk away. So just be prepared to have that conversation, get your ducks in a row and know that's coming. So that way you won't be surprised and be a, a sigh of relief from your lender 
when you realize that the conversation's coming and it makes it easier to talk about it. So without, or with that, we have it. Let me grab that promo code for you. You're sticking with me to the end. PH20BP will get you 20% off of that template. That's already less than $100. So it's great value. Again, we have a, a full video walkthrough on how to create the projections yourself, but we have free support available through chat and email, and custom video recordings to help you get your projections made. And we'll do a free review of them. If you want to send them to us when you're done filling them out, we'll give you some feedback totally for free. So if you have questions, reach out to us at support at projectionhub.com. Leave us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the content. And we will see you in the next one. Thanks.